We have all heard the song and we know the traditional stories, at least what we're told. But have you ever looked up the definition of Old Nick in the dictionary? Oops, this is not good. We all know the tradition of this Santa Claus, the secret gift giver, uh, who slides down your chimney even if you don't have one. Don't know how he does it then. Uh, magic, of course. Somehow, uh, he doesn't even get dirty, even though he wears white fringes and has a white beard. <laughs> uh, and he puts under our Christmas trees gifts. Oh, we have a video on the Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Check it out. Uh, you've got to see it if you haven't. Uh, and then he fills our stockings, right? And yeah, right. Uh, we're all told this is based on an historic character. And, you know, obviously it's, it's fiction, sort of, kind of, yet. Well, a lot of people don't tell their kids it's fiction, do they? No, not until later in life. And so we lie to our children in their most impressionable time, which is probably not a good practice of a parent. Anyway, just saying. Yet now, he has somehow, after death, become a god who can fly, perform magic, witchcraft, and sorcery, and even has psychic powers as a seer, supposedly. This all-knowing god, as they describe, uh, whether knowingly or not, somehow knows every deed of every child alive on earth. Really? Of course, the original legend is not that he knows whether you have been naughty or nice so he can give you a present. No, oh, no, no, no. But the opposite is this guy was more like a Halloween demon who executed punishment for bad children. Oh, that's so lovely. Let's go to the origin of this song, though. The definition of Old Nick. Who is he? And we'll go into the Nicolaitans. Who are they? That's from the Bible. Uh, not a guy you want to invite into your home, by the way. Uh, if he is there and you ever find him, well, be a good parent. Rebuke him in the name of Yahusha and keep your milk and cookies. Oh, this guy is in the Bible, all right. And there is nothing good about him. Buckle up. This sleigh is about to depart. The character of Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, has evolved over centuries, driven largely by Catholic lore, which is how the Catholic Church operates, understand. Just like the Three Kings, which came out 500 years after Messiah, uh, that they've now named the Three Kings. They say they're from regions that, well, David said they're not. So they can't even read the Bible uh, and understand it clearly, which is clear of the Catholic Church on a host of things. Now, this has no basis in the Bible, and no one ever needed such fiction in order to celebrate, well, what's supposed to be just the birth of Yahushua, right? Especially uh, since that's in June anyway. So, duh. Wrong season, wrong God. Uh, Jolly Old St. Nicholas, the song was first published and documented in 1881, uh, which is very recent in history, no doubt. Uh, the legend goes back a little further, but not really that much in terms of history, as far as this big fat guy goes, especially. Uh, a lot of that didn't gel until the 1950s or so. Realize that. This is, this is a deception that unwind for many centuries. Uh, and just recently took shape to what we see today. However, the writer of this song, which some tried to debate, who cares, let them go play the little games, uh, this is kind of like having a copyright. This is the first one on screen uh, published. So legally, debate settled, there you go. But who cares if someone else wrote it, doesn't matter. However, it indicates the lyrics came from a poem written by a prominent church lady. Hmm, okay, let's see. The lyrics resemble a poem published as Lily's Secret. So no matter who wrote it, they, they used her poem as the origin, and that really is, is not something that's up for debate. We won't read into that as the song is a girl asking Old Nick, 
uh, to lean his ear her way so she can tell him what she wants for Christmas. Well, except, well, he's all-knowing and doesn't need to tell her, right? I mean, that's how they've pumped this up, <laughs> this character as a god, essentially. Uh, why? Well, because he is a false pagan god inserted into the wrong time of year for the birth of Messiah anyway. Uh, but that should not surprise anyone, because there's absolutely nothing about Christmas that even includes Yahusha. He's not the reason for that season in any sense, and that's not his name on there either. His name isn't Christ. Uh, that's not a name. It's a title in Greek. It's actually Messiah is what it means, and that's not his day. Uh, it was Christ's Mass. Before that, it was Saturnalia. Watch the real history of Christmas. We proved that out. Now, I said Old Nick, and the song says, well, jolly old St. Nicholas, right? Well, someone will probably say that in comments, so let's address that. This songwriter wrote another song as well. Up on the housetop, click, click, click. Down through the chimney with good St. Nick. I know some versions worded a little differently, but pretty much the same. That's his wording. So he certainly called him good Saint Nick. He knew that that's what you do. You call him Saint Nick. Okay. And elsewhere in the song, he calls him good old Santa Claus. See, old Nick. There you go. So old Nick indeed. Now, we're not going to even go to the history of the church lady who was an academic who wrote many poems, uh, but basically uh, to say this, we, we will say this, if you read some of her children's materials, which we actually have, we absorbed several of hers to see what is her theology, what's up with this chick, does she really know the Bible? The answer, no. She does not represent scripture, she screws it up for our children. Isn't that lovely? She wrote children's church materials in her day, and what a lovely, lovely thing. No, what an absolute propagandist and occultist, really. She was clearly the origin of several things our churches mess up, such as, I'll give you a few examples, she claims the angel who came to the shepherds uh, at Messiah's birth, uh, that the angel was a she. Uh, what? The Bible Never says that anywhere. All angels are always male in Scripture as far as gender. Only in the occult are they female, and that's false. Now, she thinks that when we die, we become angels. That's illiterate. No way. That is not Scripture. It originates, it originates in the fraudulent second Enoch, for one, uh, not found in Qumran for good reason, and similar occult texts. Yeah, in that story, uh, Enoch becomes Metatron, an angel, and becomes leader of the angels. Because what? Michael wasn't doing a good enough job. He needed to be replaced. Oh, 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 oops. Revelation says Michael's still in charge of the angels in the very end. So that's stupid. It has always been a cult nonsense, and it remains so. And any channel out there that's covering Second Enoch as if it's scripture is also illiterate of Scripture. They can't even read and, and see that you know what they have there. But it wasn't found in Qumran, um, and it is not Scripture, not Second Enoch. Only the first book of Enoch, which has five sections, but it's all one book. The first book of Enoch, actually, we prove in uh, our publishing of it. Uh, you can get a copy, even free an ebook at firstenoch.org. Read the introduction for yourself. Uh, if man became angels when we die, well, then Yahuwah breaks his own law of creation, and the flood never should have even been needed, because there's nothing wrong with angels and humans mixing, right? Wrong. There is something massively wrong, so wrong with that, that Yahuwah responded to that with the flood. Wow. That's a huge wrong. Now, we don't need more angels, and men don't become them, so illiterate. Because, see, angels don't die. You, you realize that, right? They, <laughs> they, they live forever, so uh, they don't need to populate. They don't need to repopulate. This is why they are ordered not to reproduce. Not that they can't. Obviously, they wouldn't need to be ordered not to unless they could. They can when they're in the body of a man. Now, so she misleads children 
And we don't like this lady. Let's just be clear. We don't. Uh, not her doctrines and not her teachings, not from what we've read, and it, it really is nonsense. And we could expose that over multiple videos, especially her retelling of the Christmas story, which is against Scripture, but why? Well, she was religious and an academic, the daughter of a Methodist minister, clearly placating political correctness of the day uh, with a Bible theology that comes right out of the Catholic Church and just doesn't even know Scripture remotely. Uh, she didn't know the Bible, but you know what she knew? She knew her occult paradigm really well. They teach that in seminaries, so it's easy to capture. Uh, it's pretty much what most pastors uh, are taught, uh, largely. Uh, she was decorated, celebrated for that, which is what the world does with those who love the occult and promote it, especially infusing it into the Bible, and most especially ingraining such into the smallest of children, which this Christmas message goes. How about that? You know, Abe Lincoln said it best, something like this. I don't know if I have the exact language, but he said the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. How true is that? Uh, and our schools are really, they've become occult breeding grounds, but they were even in her time uh, a century ago. Uh, they plant seeds in our children's minds. They harvest them into adulthood, uh, keeping them blind the whole time, and then they're stuck in a paradigm that many adults can't seem to get out of. However many are, many are awakening today. Many of them follow this channel. But who is Old Nick, huh? Have you ever heard that before? Well, this is astonishing that so many haven't gone to the dictionary to see for themselves. Most dictionaries uh, say this. Let's go there. Now we'll begin with one of the oldest dictionaries here that we have that renders this, Old Nick. Uh, here's the 1828 Webster's dictionary. By that time, the character of jolly old Saint Nick, well, he was not quite formed yet. Understand that. Uh, that song wasn't written yet, and, uh, you know, this is pretty telling. In fact, it would not be until the middle of last century that he fully became uh, everything that we see today, as we mentioned. Uh, the real question why is he even involved in this day, especially if it were the birth of Yahusha, which it's not, but the opposite time of year, but it is the birth of the sun god known by many names. Oh, wait a minute. Who is Old Nick? In 1828, he was known in northern mythology, that's Europe, uh, basically, uh, as an evil spirit of the satyrs. Oh, you mean the hybrid half-goat, half-men uh, from the Nephilim paradigm? Oh, you, the pure evil demon characters, uh, because they are? Hmm, that's nice. Uh, or better said, you know, he's really the leader of the demons. Who's, who's that? Oh, oh, that's Satan, the devil in scripture. Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry. We have Lots more definitions coming that will tell you exactly that. Hence the modern vulgar phrase, Old Nick, the evil one. Really? How is it that this is in the dictionary, well known before this poem or song was ever written? Hmm. So as an academic, think about this. This author, she's well educated. She's a decorated educator, in fact. She well knew whom she was invoking into the Christmas season with that poem, which became a song. And so should we, really. Oh, but dictionaries didn't forget this, even. Uh, it wasn't even removed or changed. It's still there. Let's see. Webster's, still today, defines Old Nick as the name of the devil, Satan. What? They know whom this is. Online, on their site, and in print. Wow, there it is. Uh, now, we will explain why that is as well. The connection is actually pretty easy to see, but we'll get there. It says 
The name Old Nick was first used in 1643, and note that is centuries before this song was written, and before this Santa, St. Nick, Old Nick, was fully forged as a character for that matter, which is really much more recent. If they weren't stupid, they would have just removed this name, yet they didn't because they clearly wished to fool us with something like this right under our noses in plain sight. That's Phariseeism 101. Understand that. It is how they are commanded in the Talmud to operate, and they can be caught, folks. We can catch them on a host of things, and we have on this channel. And the Catholic Church and religion in general is run by Pharisees. They profane everything they touch, even if only a little souring with leaven, says Messiah himself many, many times. The Cambridge Dictionary, Old Nick is the devil. Yes, the evil one from the Bible. Let's be clear, they are, they specify. Macmillan defines this is the devil. Britannica, the name of the devil. Satan, Oxford Learner's Dictionary, the devil. <laughs> from the mid-17th century, so the 1600s, uh, same as Webster's, and they tie it to the name Nicholas. Hmm. But that is clear as the Christmas legends do that very uh, clearly already. We know this as Nicholas is jolly old Saint Nick, right? Now, why? what are we really saying? Jolly Saint Satan? Hmm, nice. This is how the occult and Phariseeism operate, right in front of our face, and they even don't mind that the information is right there, easy to find as well. They get extra credit for this kind of deception, in fact. Etymology.com brings in a connection that makes sense here. And this really, this is why Nick is used, old Nick, okay? Uh, see, in British English, especially around 1869, that's about the same time this whole narrative was being forged here, uh, the word Nick, well, it meant to steal, okay? Uh, as in, the boy nicked her purse. He stole it. Oh, wait a minute. Who is the famous thief? Ah, Satan is. Now, we'll show you the scripture. F familiar form of Nicholas. Keeps going back to that, which we all know, Nick, Nicholas, yes. As the devil in the 1640s, but the reason for that is obscure, is it? Huh. Funny how academics have such a hard time figuring things out and connecting things, which they are guilty of disconnecting. Hmm. It's almost like they don't want to know, or don't want us to know. Hmm. Now, they don't prove things. They certainly don't anymore. Even scientism uh, will tell you that it's not their aim to prove things. Well, then what the heck are you doing? You're not a scientist if you don't. So just, you know, why don't you just stop writing things and shut your mouth and go sit in the corner where you belong, dunce. Now, they just waffle around the same paradigm, never leaving it mostly. Perhaps, in this sense, it is Middle English, uh, Nicker, Niker, uh, oh, how nice. Check this out. What's that? Well, it is a water demon, a water sprite, uh, a mermaid. <laughs> that's, that's real nice. From Old English, Nicor, see, Nixie. Uh, who? Well, we'll show you. We'll get there. Don't worry. Who is this infamous thief? Well, he's the original thief, of course. Yahusha called them out in John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that you may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So the first and famous nicker, <laughs> the old ancient nick, is Satan indeed. And this is why he is called old nick, okay? You can go much further back than the 1600s for that. Now, if you find him in your home trying to put something under your tree, go ahead and shoot him. <laughs> no, but rebuke him in Yahusha's name. You can't shoot Satan, of course. Uh, you could try, but you won't hit him. 
why would we tell our children stories of Satan coming, bearing them gifts anyway? I, what? Worse, you bought those gifts for your children, and then you give Satan credit for them. What a message we're sending. Oh, the occultists and rabbis, who are occultists, are laughing in the back room over this one. Imagine, some will even comment that all these dictionaries are wrong, right? I, and jolly old Saint Nick is not old Nick. Oh, that's somebody else, because it doesn't specifically say old Nick. It's just in the name, old Nick. Duh. Yeah. Wave your hand in magic and lie in witchcraft. Don't even try it here, because you'll be muted. Our channel our rules. No, thank you. They're laughing at us for falling for this lie and all of these lies about this new holiday called Christmas today, never found in the Bible, well, except in rebuke, of course. Watch O Christmas Tree. Collins Dictionary by Harper Collins. Uh, Old Nick is a name for Satan in British English. The devil, Satan. In American English. So don't try to go there and say, oh, that's just British. No, it's American too. You may not know it. I understand. But that's what the dictionary says. Yeah. They say its origin is one, Nicholas. Hmm. Keeps coming up. And they bring in Nick, the water goblin, the demon, Nix. Okay, so who is that? We've just seen this a couple of times now. Let's go and find out who Nix is. From Encyclopedia Britannica, Nix is from Germanic mythology. That'd be Scandinavian, they say. A water being, half human, half fish. Nice. That lives in a beautiful underwater palace and mingles with humans by assuming a variety of physical forms, like a fair maiden. Or old woman. Wait, wait. You, you mean like Disney's The Little Mermaid? Ha! <laughs> wow. E e really? So, Nyx is The Little Mermaid. Hmm. Indeed, Disney is one of the largest perpetrators of the occult in all of history. Notice how they have to insert sorcery, witchcraft, rebellion against parents especially. In everything they do, Disney is absolutely an occult organization and everything they put out is riddled with trash like this. Disney's among the most evil organizations of our time. Know that. And once again, just like the celebrated academic poet who wrote this song and its origin in the occult world, these are icons. Disney's very successful. In the Bible, they are called harlots. That's what they are. Why are we allowing harlots to teach our children is the real question. Now, it defines this a little further. It says that these are music lovers. Now, can we really not see? Christmas even has its own music genre. <laughs> it's its own genre. Uh, they're excellent dancers. Well, also, big part of Saturnalia, the origin of Christmas. But, you know, when you start looking at... Uh, the uh, myths thrown in here, such as satyrs. Satyrs love to dance. Uh, you know, mermaids as well, in a sense, especially when they have legs and they, they convert to human. And they have the gift of prophecy. Oh, you mean just like Santa. Hmm. Old Nick certainly is beginning to look a lot like Saint Dan. Oh, did I say that? And get this. Using usually malevolent evil, okay, meaning harm. They want to hurt you. A nix can easily be propitiated or appeased, satisfied, or warded off, right? You can get rid of them, but how do you do it? Oh, with gifts. Ha! Could you be any clearer here in the connection? I mean, it's amazing. Oh, you mean like Christmas? Actually, even sounds more like Halloween, in fact, trick-or-treat. Uh, yes, this Christmas is far worse, though, and far more occult and satanic, and much better veiled. I mean, Halloween looks satanic. Christmas doesn't seem to, yet it's far more satanic, and it's really how he operates. You aren't giving gifts to Jesus on this day. 
I mean, you're not. You, you know that, right? You give them to your children, your family, your friends. It has nothing to do with him. And yes, he's giving, but you're even giving things that they don't even need a lot of times. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, we're playing an occult game when we, when we keep this holiday. In some regions, Nixes are said to abduct human children. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you think the sack is actually for? Think about it. Oh, by the way, no, he, he doesn't bring presents. Not originally. That's not the story. And you know this because you buy them and you give him credit. Stop pretending. The origin of the sack, by the way, is his sidekick who would capture little children, the bad ones, of course. Uh, but last we checked, that is still not okay to abduct children, even if they're bad, right? I mean, come on. And worse, to lure people into deep water to drown. What a lovely Christmas tradition. What paradigm is this? Well, it's the one that caused the flood. That's what it is. That's what we're seeing here. Christmas is Nephilim, folks. Let's call it what it is. According to some sources, Nixes can marry human beings and bear children. Oh, you mean like the Nephilim giants and hybrids who brought Yahuwah's response in the flood? Oh, how nice. What a wonderful time of year. Not. Only for the occult. But some out there will actually question why Satan would be called old. I know, it's kind of unthinkable that anybody would ask the question, but there are several blogs out there that do this. It is absolutely ridiculous, the things that they come up with. And they say, oh, well, you know, uh, the devil is depicted as young in several images. Well, illiterate images of the inept have no bearing on anything. And by the way, angels probably all look young. But this is never a point. We not only know that Satan was there in the Garden of Eden, duh, making him incredibly ancient, many thousands of years, but Revelation 12 comes right out and calls him by name that old serpent, the ancient evil one, called the devil and Satan. Could it really not spell it out any better? I think we know who they're talking about. Uh, there is so much trash out there, it is incredible, and we filter through this stuff all the time and have to. But we all do, guys. We have to prove all things and hold fast to that, which is good. You have to maintain a solid foundation. For one, that means, well, don't celebrate satanic holidays, such as Christmas, for one. Now, the Catholic Church will tell us that this old Nick has historical basis, right? I mean, that's what we've heard in tradition, and what a nice story it is. Oh, indeed, Satan, the old serpent, the devil, whom Revelation 3 tells us has his seat, his throne, uh, which, by the way, never moved, and some physical throne of Zeus is not the actual throne of Satan. That's illiterate. Uh, he's still in the same place, modern-day Turkey even named for him as he is the old Turk as well. Now, we've covered that uh, in other videos. Hmm. But let's go to Boston College, who apologizes uh, for the Catholic Church. We all know the story of St. Nicholas from Myra, Turkey. Uh, that's where he's from, from the seat of Satan, where the synagogue of Satan operates. Remember that. Oops, <laughs> he was not a bishop of the biblical ecclesia. Nothing in the Catholic Church ever was, let's be clear. Uh, watch after the apostles, we prove that. But in the fourth century or so, in the false church against the Bible, that's where he served uh, and became a saint. Yeah, right. Supposedly he gave to three girls so they wouldn't have to become prostitutes. Well, except, uh, the, number one, that's not a miracle. That's giving, that's nice, if he actually did it, and it's a true story, likely it's not. Especially when you consider, uh, you know, rather than sneaking, you know, into the window or just giving through an intermediary, which is pretty easy to do, and you would think a bishop would know how to do, duh. Uh, but no, 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 he was far too stupid for that. No, he had to go up and climb down a chimney. In that age? You mean when they actually used their chimneys as they not only kept warm by the fireplace, but 
many use to cook, for that matter, at least uh, tea and things like that. But, hmm, that sounds very suspect. I mean, unless he was just, you know, maybe retarded. I don't know. How, of course, it, it makes no sense. It's a blatant lie because it's fabricated to puff up the man who was really a nobody as far as Yahuwah is concerned. He wasn't even in his ecclesia nor saved for that matter. Yes, we can say that because we know them by their fruits. He then supposedly began the tradition of stuffing stockings except oh, there is a far more ancient evil such tradition. We're not going to cover it here, but you can look it up. But he placed their gift, a dowry, for them in stockings. Uh, okay. Uh, which he climbed through the fireplace and then climbed back up through the fireplace. Okay. So he returned to the chimney and somehow climbed up again because, well, they must not have had any doors, right, uh, or windows. Or, or no, maybe maybe their security system was on, right? And, you know, so they, they couldn't go out the back door or the window without setting off the alarm, maybe. Uh, how stupid. This is, this is the dumbest narrative, just like you see from the Catholic Church all the time, when they make stuff up and they contrive stories that are fairy tales, not history. These are nonsensical. Are we saying this dude is old Nick? Nope. His legend is however uh, that's the connection that's made in tradition that's what they say uh, he's called the wonder worker you you mean like the antichrist well <laughs> whoops uh yeah that's what revelation says how's that well again they attribute mer the miracle of giving a gift well that's not a miracle so that's stupid uh, again the catholic church doesn't even know m just basic definitions of words like miracle uh, <laughs> but since that didn't work, obviously. Uh, they then made up that he, he raised three murdered boys from the dead. Wow. Except that's not true either. You know, old Nick leads children to their deaths. The opposite. See what they're doing? You can see it right there. Saint Nick is the patron saint of sailors. Wait a minute. You mean like the false god and really fallen angel Poseidon, the god of the sea? Gee, is that how mermaids got involved in this as well? Hmm. Of merchants. Oh, Merry Christmas indeed. Now go buy, 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 because the harlot of Babylon needs you to. And her son, Mammon, by one name, the Bible name, but also uh, they need to grow their power. Yeah, because that's what you're doing at Christmas time. You're feeding mammon. That's what we're doing. We're supporting them, and oh, that's right. That's her son, Tammuz, uh, in Babylon, who is mammon, or Plautos in Greek, uh, who is the image of what they call Santo Nino in the Philippines, same one. The god of wealth, uh, who was born on December 25th not Yahusha, who was born in June. Hmm, there it is. Why is the season in which this character is wrapped into the apex of materialism? You know, he's the patron saint of archers. Huh, now that may not make any sense. Where would that come from? Well, it doesn't come from the Bible. There's no such thing. Uh, that is the false sun god, Apollo, who actually is the god of archers. How about that? And on the birthday of the sun god, even. No, it's not his, but Mithra and other names uh, of the sun god do carry the December 25th date uh, because it is the winter solstice. To repentant, right, <laughs> Uh, says Beavis and Butthead, who probably wrote this. But anyway, uh, thieves. Okay, uh, whoever came up with this legend was a thief, probably, and they likely never repented. Oh, wait, the ancient thief, Old Nick, is Satan himself. So there you have that invoked in this guy's attributes. It's so obvious. Two children. Now, that's the goddess Artemis, for one. These are their attributes. These are attributes of false gods. This is not a biblical paradigm in any sense. 
So uh, there are others, by the way, not just Artemis, and other names in other uh, religions. Uh, she has, uh, and there's a he that does too. But we are demonstrating for you this naming of attributes, which never occurs in the Bible, ever. No, it doesn't. It's the same occult paradigm continued as the Catholic Church represents that and everything it does, because that's what it is. Okay, so then we have pawnbrokers. <laughs> that's kind of odd. You know that the, the three balls, the three gold balls on the pawnbroker signs and whatnot on their logos, where did that come from? It came from the story of St. Nicholas. How about that? Mammon and a trade of Pharisees, in fact. But again, this goes with materialism that we talked about before, uh, the merchants. Yahushua turned over their tables at the temple, and he still hates that profession, by the way. It is the worst of usury taking advantage of the poor. That's the reality of pawnbrokers. And students, again, Artemis, again, uh, same as children. Boston College ties this guy historically to the legend of Santa Claus, of course. And again, we know that through tradition. That's Saint Nick, and it's Old Nick. Old Saint Nick. There you go. And Santa Claus, uh, which we all know, which it came through, which is just a different language, but that's Santa Claus. Uh, in elevating this guy in a free Masonic apo apotheosis, uh, this Saint Nicholas, as the Catholic Church practices, by the way, because that's what they're doing when they saint someone. It is they're they're giving them an apotheosis where they become. Now they don't say they become a god, but they just give them their attributes, which means they become a god. I mean, they, they just don't say it. And then they'll tell you, of course, when you call them out on it, oh, no, we don't do that. Just like they say, oh, no, we don't pray. We don't pray to them. We ask them to pray for us. Uh, isn't that the same thing? Duh. I mean, are, you really can't hear what you're saying? Okay. So basically, this whole sainthood nonsense, uh, giving it a different name, of course, but anyone can see through this very easily. St. Nicholas, old Nick, even gets a feast day. But forget the ones in the Bible, of course. No! You can't keep those. That's evil. Don't you dare keep the biblical feast. No. You're supposed to replace it with Satan's day. Nice. Very good. Think about it. What was Daniel, the patron saint of? Well, nothing. That's not a Bible paradigm. How about Isaiah, Ezekiel, Noah, Adam? No such exists in the whole of Scripture. There is no sainthood in that sense. Yes, they are saints. That's what believers are called, saints. But that ain't this saint, because what they call saint is a god. How do you know? From its attributes. Because only a god can, from death, from the grave, protect all of these different facets. This is so ridiculous, even in thinking about it. It's the dumbest paradigm ever. No such exists in the Holy Scripture. It is from the occult, Greek mythology, Babylonian, Roman, Egyptian even. It has nothing to do with the Bible. The question is, who was dumb enough in the Catholic Church to give their supposed saints the very attributes of false gods and idols from these pagan religions? I mean, how dumb can you be? I mean, they don't even try to hide it. That's the reality. And again, very Pharisee of them. And where does the Bible say to pray to these dead people or ask them to pray for you, which is just semantics of the same thing? Uh, why? They're dead. We pray to the Father in Yahushua's name, John 14, 6, and no one else, period. Anything else is pagan, worship, practiced for thousands of years. Well, I mean, we, we know these things. It's well documented for many thousands of years. Here you even have their attributes that match that paradigm, not the Bible. Oh, and look how this fits Christmas as well. Check this out. Think about it. Sailors, well, they're travelers. And the number one travel time of the year is, well, these, this Christmas season. Uh, that's no coincidence. Merchants, wow, well, that, I mean, this is the number one retail time of year. Still Christmas. Uh, archers, well, it brings in Apollo or insert whomever the sun god uh, you wish in whichever paradigm. But the reality is the sun god is born December 25th. Again, Apollo wasn't, uh, there's a different legend for him specifically, but Mithra most certainly was. 
uh, as well as several other names. Uh, and he is the god of Catholicism, especially. I mean, that is whom Constantine worshipped. He was high priest of Mithraism. Mithra was his god, not Yahuwah. Thieves, that's Satan's attribute, of course. Children and students are targeted this time of year, number one as well. Even brewers of alcohol, well, this event originally, historically known as the Saturnalia season, is originally a drunk fest and orgy. So yeah, both. Uh, never a biblical holiday or holy day, uh, and it still isn't. Wow. You just can't make stuff up like this. It's so obvious. Then there is Santa, St. Nick, Old Nick, sidekick, of which there are many in different traditions, all evil, uh, different characters of different types. Again, the origin of this character is to punish children. Not give them a candy cane, punish them. Not give them a present, punish them. And even abduct them, and Krampus historically does exactly that, just as we saw in the definition of the Knicks. Same thing. He carries the sack, not Santa, and he stuffs the bad children in there and takes them away. Some legends say to hell, some just to punish, and some death even. But all evil, and this is a satyr, folks. A Nephilim hybrid, whitewashed out of the American version, of course. Uh, yet, to participate in this evil satanic day in any sense is to promote evil and support a Nephilim paradigm. You can't get more of a doctrine of demons than that. And you can't explain it away uh, with, well, you know, I participate in Satan's day because, well, you know, I do it for Jesus. Huh? Do you hear what you just said? <laughs> Stand back and listen and try it again. Don't pretend you don't know what a stupid lie that is. Yahushua is not the reason for this season, and that is why it is lined with the occult uh, lies like this one. Now, in her title, we called him Jolly Old Saint Nicolaitan. Oh, say who? Let's go to the scriptures and vet that out. Revelation 2, 1 through 7, from the KJV. This is Yahushua to the seven ecclesias, or some called churches, though that's not actually a Bible word in origin. It's Old English, and it goes back to cirque, or circus uh, is the root, uh, which is an entertainment event, which is what modern churches become, but is not biblical. Now, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saying, He that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them, which are evil. That's good. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. No, it's not talking about Paul. It's talking about the synagogue of Satan. It's talking about the Catholic Church, the origin of it, because it's exactly what they were doing. They crept in unawares. But they're still Satan's church, the Nicolaitans from Old Nick. And hast found them liars. See, they're liars. Just as the synagogue of Satan, Revelation uh, 2, 9 and 3, 9, as Yahushua says, I know we're not supposed to call people liars, right? That's absolutely wrong. Try to read scripture before you go saying stuff like that because it's nonsense. That is not an accurate reading of scripture. We most certainly follow Messiah's example, and he's the one speaking here. He's the one that called them liars. You know, if they lie, they're liars. If you don't call them that, you're just dishonest, that's all. And hast born and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Yahusha. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, turn from it, and do the first works, or else... I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. Wow. There would no longer be his ecclesia by definition, but 
How much more so is the Catholic Church, which from its foundation, even in the first century, has been the opposite of his teachings, of the apostles' teachings, and of what the early ecclesias observed? Wow. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Wow. Some try to connect a bishop of the true ecclesia named Nicholas, uh, who has no record whatsoever in scripture of being evil, but instead holy. They make up stories about him that are not found there, yet he was filled with the Holy Ghost and, again, holy. And that is a despicable lie that they make up in scholarship because the dunderheads can't even read, so they just make up their own Bible. No, the Nicolaitans have another name, the Synagogue of Satan, in these passages. The followers of Old Nick, thus the Nicolaitans, see. Is this St. Nicholas? Well, he wasn't there then, but centuries later. However, this legend, his legend, is the embodiment of the Nicolaitans in the church of the Nicolaitans, for which, to which he belonged as a bishop in uh, we call that the Catholic Church today. Now, if Yahusha hates their doctrines, why would any of us follow them in any sense? Yet the Protestant Church built its foundation. Even Martin Luther made some massive errors because he didn't divorce himself completely from the doctrines of the Catholic Church, but still kept the foundation. You don't do that. You don't take a house that has a bad foundation and try to rehab it and build on top of that. You have to get rid of the foundation and start over, build on the solid rock, and build it right. And that's what he should have done, and he did not. We do not agree with Martin Luther. Not in that for sure. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, the ecclesias. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. Yes, the garden and tree of life are still there in Revelation. There you have it. That's just one place. It says it, I believe, three times. They don't move and were not destroyed. The very holy of holies of Yahuwah is there, according to the book of Jubilees, which really is exactly what Genesis has always said. We just now know how to read it. Verse 12. Yahusha identifies his enemies, and we are listening and following their legends today. And the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? That's an ecclesia again. There is no word church in uh, the Hebrew. <laughs> it's not what that is. Uh, These things saith he, which hath the sharp sword with two edges indeed. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Now this is Turkey and that is where Satan operates from. He never moved. No record of that. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. So he just warns you twice, Satan dwells, and his throne is located in what we call modern-day Turkey, where St. Nicholas comes from, where the synagogue of Satan the Catholic Church and Pharisees, modern Judaism, really blossomed with the support of an emperor, in fact, made the state religion, in fact, uh, because he even moved the seat of the Roman Empire there to the very seat of Satan. Hmm, now that's some history. Not good. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrines of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. So basically, to infiltrate. That's Balaam's doctrine. To eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. What is that? What is that even saying? Well, Balaam's doctrine, again, is to infiltrate and lead the people astray, Israel in that case, but it's still today, 
uh, it's all believers anywhere. Uh, that is the very origin of the Nicolaitans, and we now call them the Catholic Church, and again Pharisees, uh, Rabbinic Judaism. With their saint or false god, they attribute godhood attributes to justify, well, the same old pagan nonsense rebuked throughout Scripture. That's what it is. That's eating food sacrificed to idols. When, when do the occultists sacrifice to their idols? Well, they do it on their holidays, like Christmas, originally Saturnalia, it was called, uh, and even earlier origins, really. Uh, watch the real history of Christmas. We lay all that out from valid, credible history. Also, sex rituals, fertility rituals included, just as, well, Christ's mass was an orgy as was its origin, Saturnalia. Nothing new under the sun, folks, nor the sun god, for that matter. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. That's the Catholic Church, founded by the Pharisees, Rabbinic Judaism, really. Now let's compare these in a moment, uh, and but let's finish reading first. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. There he is again. He mentions it multiple times. Revelation mentions that later as well. Uh, when he does, in fact, consume them with a sword from his mouth. You see it in 2nd Ezra. You see it in Enoch even, uh, in 1st Enoch. He's talking about on the day of judgment, understand that, uh, when all the wicked are consumed with a flaming sword of eternal fire from his mouth. The wicked, well, that never blossoms, okay? It may seem for a a temporary period during their lifetime that they excel and they, they die wealthy or whatever, but that's, that's not happiness and that's not eternal. That's eternal death is what it is still if they don't know him. We must be in relationship with him, period. We have nothing. He that hath an ear, there he goes again, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the ecclesias. There's no church. Uh, not in Scripture, there's not. Do we have ears? Yeah, I know it's there in the English. Someone's going to say, yes, it is. It's an old English word, very new uh, in the paradigm. Didn't exist in the days of the Bible, so it doesn't belong there. It's a terrible, terrible uh, translation of the word ecclesia, which is just a general gathering. Yahusha described it as two or more. That's it. It does not require an organization uh, with infrastructure and all of those things, and it doesn't require a building. It never has. So if we have ears, uh, or, well, if we don't have well, them stuffed full of leaven, that is, <laughs> so we can't hear, uh, this is for us, right? So to him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna? And we'll give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that received it. Now that's Yahushua's hidden name from creation. Uh, he was given that name. Uh, no one knows it today, uh, and will not until Revelation. That's when it will be unveiled. It's his name from creation and his name that was used to create. That's why it's so important. Um, however, watch the hidden name where we prove that. That's not really this video. So what did this just say? Who are these Nicolaitans? Well, they're the ones keeping occult holidays, eating food sacrificed to idols. That's when you do it on occult holidays, on the holidays for those idols. Holidays that historically include sex rituals of fertility, uh, and worship of the fertility god or goddess, of course. The Christmas orgy, in origin, most certainly qualifies, as does the Easter, Easter, same word, bunnies and eggs. That's why they're there. Um, amazing how easy this is to see through when you step back and look at it with your blinders off. We were all just as deceived, us too. Uh, this is not about condemnation. It's about obedience to the word, which is all that matters. Our feelings are impertinent. 
And if you're offended, good, you're welcome. So what did we just read? Let's break it down here. The Nicolaitan doctrines. Well, number one, they're evil. They are liars and imposters, as their father, Old Nick, you know, the ancient thief, the devil, also called a liar in Scripture many times. In fact, the father of lies. Uh, wow. <laughs> they attack his name. Oh, wait. Is that why the Catholic Church, with the assistance of the Pharisees, removed YHWH, Yahua from our modern Bibles over 6,800 times, replacing it with a generic title of Lord, which in Hebrew, go back into the Hebrew, it's the word Baal, meaning master or Lord. Yeah, well, you don't say, oops, did I do that? <laughs> what a mistake. Oh, sorry. N no, and of course, they're not sorry for it. Uh, they don't apologize. They just continue to do it. And all modern Bibles come out pretty much all uh, still have the same mistake 6,800 plus times. So every one of them is imperfect, including the KJV. If you're KJV only, your KJV is missing things it should have. You can only do that on purpose and with intent to deceive. And he calls them out twice on that, you'll see. They lead us away from Yahusha, not to him. Now, he is not there for Christmas. Sorry. He's not coming to your house for Christmas dinner. Satan will, Zeus will, Apollo will. Oh, yeah, they'll all show up. But Yahusha will not. He'll have no part in it. He does not allow us to pollute his birth with all this occult nonsense, especially since he was born in June. Duh. He hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans, the Pharisees, and the Catholic Church today, we call them. So why would we follow either in anything? And I mean anything. In fact, he says they must be overcome. Okay, so he will soon on the Day of Judgment especially. Don't worry, uh, but... We cannot fall for their deceptions. That's the point. We can overcome them. Uh, or they will lead us to hell. And Christmas, most especially, leads exactly there. Oh, it's packaged very nicely. It's very pretty. The colors are beautiful. The lights, the trees, it's so beautiful. Yet, it is the ugliest time of year. It is not the most wonderful. It's only the most wonderful for Satan. Because it's his day. They operate where the seat, the throne of Satan's power, physically exists on earth. And where he dwells. And now we never moved that in scripture. In Britain, you'll find uh, the seat of power there is his number two, Gog of Magog. Watch our videos, Gog of Magog, and you'll see that's actually mapped out by the Book of Jubilees and that's exposed now. But you will not find his there. No, because Satan didn't move his seat of power. He doesn't need to. Remember, Satan is not omnipotent, though, as Yahuwah. He's not only, uh, he's not everywhere at once. He's only in one place at a time. Then he repeats again. They attack his name. Kind of important. They are killers, murderers. And Pharisees are called such by Yahushua in the Gospels. It's right there in red. And the Catholic history is riddled with the bloodiest history of any organization of all time. I mean, when you go back and you look at the Crusades, the Inquisitions, their support of communism, uh, you know, their perpetrating wars, the, the whole period of colonialism, it is a disgusting history uh, despicable history for a so-called church that wasn't going around spreading Jesus, but they were going around killing, stealing, and destroying, which are the fruits of, well, old Nick. How about that? They infiltrate from within. That is their craft. And yes, that word is on purpose because they are the craft, indeed. Witchcraft. Uh, crept in unawares, as according to Jude, and Paul also defines them that way. 
uh, says that they came in early. This is uh, that church is easy to find because you just go back as we have into history uh, from the time of the apostles to the next generations. And who followed the example of the apostles and Messiah and who didn't? Well, the Catholic Church did not in origin from its inception, from the beginning. That's why it looks different today. It has always been, since its inception, the opposite of Scripture. Watch after the Apostles, that series. And Nicolaitans, very specifically, one of the largest definitions, very easy to follow, uh, worship occult holidays. The Catholic Church calls this Christianizing, which is the dumbest doctrine and concept ever. Against the Bible, complete opposite of how the Bible has ever operated, never does it operate in such sense. Uh, it does not placate evil and infuse it into the worship of Yahuwah. That's what the Samaritans did, the evil Samaritans, which become uh, Pharisees, which become rabbinic Judaism. That's their doctrine. That's their practice. He always rejected that hundreds of times in Scripture. Uh, worse, they abandon his seven feasts, yet keep counterfeits. Talk about hypocrisy at its worst. Uh, like the supposed birth of Messiah, the exact opposite time of the year on the day of the birth of Mithra, the sun god, his enemy, the god of Constantine, the not-so-great, which he was high priest of Mithraism to his dying day, where he supposedly converted to Catholicism, but that's impertinent because they're the same religion. Catholicism has never been based on the Bible. This is a staple of the Catholic Church and a sign it has never been his ecclesia. Never was. They never kept the practices of the apostles, which the early true ecclesias in Turkey, in fact, did. The difference is so easy to spot, and again, we cover the history. The Nicolaitan Catholic Church from Old Nick, the synagogue of Satan, includes fertility worship. Those are the holidays they have chosen to replace the biblical ones that have none of that nonsense. And that's just fact. He reminds us a second time that Yahushua hates their doctrines. Let's be clear. He hates Christmas. He hates Easter, which take away from his birth and his, uh, which is on the biblical feast of Shavuot in June, and his death and resurrection, which happened during the Passover unleavened bread, unleavened bread time frame. And his Holy Spirit, in fact, also came on Shavuot, which is Pentecost in Greek. By the way, those are the same day, the Feast of Weeks, uh, the Counting of Fifty, same thing. Um, those two, by the way, can never be separated uh, because you'd have to add an eighth feast to the Bible, and there's only seven. You can't add an eighth, period. Don't follow those who add to the word, at least not on things like that. And not only did they do so 2,000 years ago, but even in the end times, these Nicolaitans, also known as the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be believers of his but he says, are not but do lie in Revelation 2.9 and 3.9 as they are infiltrators. Understand that. That's what the word is very clear. That's what happened 2,000 years ago. They're the same who don't understand Paul, take his words out of context, create entire doctrines out of Paul misconstrued, trying to claim he's a rebel when he could not be. Uh, they will stand against Yahushua in the very end to battle with him. Will you follow them? They will lose swiftly and without labor. He will consume them with fire from his mouth. Follow them, and that's where they'll lead you. So, this is the Catholic Church in doctrine, the Nicolaitans, which ties to this whole holiday, which they are the ones perpetrating it, deceiving all of mankind uh, that will follow them. They are the synagogue of Satan combined with Phariseeism, which is modern Judaism, according to the Jewish encyclopedia, the followers of old Nick, the synagogue of Satan. 
uh, who doesn't smash you over the head with Satanism. That's not how he operates. Uh, but he's sitting in your church pew, and most of all, uh, he is within the leadership of your denomination. That's how he does it. He installs leaders. Uh, he needs organization and infrastructure because he's not omnipotent. The Bible, again, has no such paradigm. None of those things match it. Some such as the Catholic Church, the, the JWs even, INC, will even claim to be the only true church and neither understand scripture nor how to read it. Uh, it is never set forth in organization ever, and they are all impertinent clubs of the doctrines of men. And yes, Phariseeism also keeps the festival of lights, a very occult holiday. They call it Hanukkah, stealing a Bible word and concept uh, of the temple dedication, which never happened in December. There was never a temple dedication, dedication in December or even really near it. So, not supported by a single scripture, not kept in the entire New Testament. It is a fraud. Watch the Hanukkah hoax. And Perine, uh, propagated by their false occult book of Esther. Watch testing the book of Esther. We prove that. Again, Martin Luther even tells you that that's an occult book. He knew that. Uh, likely manufactured by the Pharisee Josephus, who was the first to publish it. Uh, it was never found in the original Bible canon, which is found in archaeology, documented in Qumran, which is Bethabara, biblically. They also profane every Sabbath and feast, keeping them on the Babylonian calendar, uh, even using false gods in their calendar like Tammuz, Adar, etc. Again, just like the Catholic Church, in plain sight, they smack us in the face with it. It's very obvious, yet many still can't see it. Time to open our eyes, folks. We all, I know many of our viewers have. So who is this? Well, not the guy from the 4th century, though his story includes much of this legend, which is their intent. Uh, his story is an embellishment of Levin, very obviously a nonsense, and he is no saint. Uh, there are none in that respect, because a saint is a god when it has such attributes. Uh, he originated in the Nicolaitans, thus the more likely reason for his name. Not the other way around. We're not saying that Nicolaitans are named for him. They were named back in, you know, the zero B.C. A.D. era in the first century, uh, so long before him. But Old Nick is Satan, to whom St. Nicholas shares attributes as patron saint of, well, things that are those of false gods from the occult uh, from thousands of years before the guy ever lived. This is Satan's holiday, and the best practice is to steer clear of Christmas in any sense. Stay away from jolly old St. Nicolaitan, indeed. For more on the actual history in the first to about the fourth century uh, of the true ecclesia and also exposing the Catholic Church as the Nicolaitans and the synagogue of Satan, watch after the apostles. They're on screen. It will blow your mind. For more on Christmas, watch Jeremiah's rebuke of the Christmas tree practice. Oh, Christmas tree, wherever did you come from? Not the Bible. Yes, that's fact. I know some try to argue with that, and they don't see that Jeremiah is not talking about an idol that has a face. There's no face being fashioned. It's just a tree brought in. Uh, yeah, it's trimmed some. Uh, it's carved on the bottom uh, to fit in a Christmas tree stand like we do today. It is very obvious. It's made to stand upright like a palm. It fits. But watch, the details are there. Then the real history of Christmas, yes, that is what is pictured, the drunk fest and orgy called Saturnalia in Rome, uh, before the time of Messiah, already in practice and really uh, long before. It has nothing to do with his birth. Also, Yahushua was born in June on the same day as Isaac, the son of covenant. That is the timeline he matches even in death. And these three videos uh, are also important. Uh, when was Jesus born series? Uh, we have them set up in a series. It's three videos in order. 
Uh, start with the year, then the month, and then the day. Don't just go and watch the day or you'll miss everything because that's more than two-thirds of the proof. The evidence is there and we prove it. Uh, you will find the Bible has always preserved the birth of Messiah. This is no mystery in any sense. Then watch the restoration of Shavuot, where we do find Isaac was born on that same day as Messiah was born, and understand what that day truly means. Most do not. The rabbis definitely don't. Uh, they've lost its meaning, which is really pathetic when you consider that that should be one of their biggest reasons for existing if they were actually serving Yahuwah, which they don't. This is the day of covenant renewal since creation. They don't have covenant, not with him. Their covenant is with, well, old Nick. Yeah, exactly. They are the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Yahudim and are not, but do lie. Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9. There's no other day in which Messiah would come in the flesh, period, except that day of covenant renewal. There is no other day. Wouldn't work. See for yourself, and tomorrow we're going to begin a new uh, series of about four videos or so, adding to Solomon's Gold series. And man, these are going to just take your breath away. These are going to make your brain explode as you realize history from the Greeks, Phoenicians, Persians, and most especially the Bible tells us the ancients most certainly circumnavigated, sailed around Africa, proven, done. Watch these videos, see for yourself. For thousands of years, before academia tells us so, uh, and before they thought it was even possible, which is nonsense when you just assess the ships of the age of Solomon especially and uh, beyond. This will be earth shattering. Wait for it. Starting tomorrow. We have over 470 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year plus now. Uh, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often. And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon. And our new podcast is available for all of our videos pretty much as well. All links in the description box and friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space, original. That is our only Facebook page, only one that we're checking and using. Uh, if you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor and Gab, links below. We have six books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries. Uh, and actually, I correct that, it's now seven. How about that? Uh, with our new release, the first book of Bible History Illustrated, Enoch's Animal Dream Visions. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the US, Canada, UK, and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it's available in hardcover or softcover there. Also, this uh, first book of Bible History Illustrated is available only in color. We're not even doing this in black and white. Only in color, and you can get it in color, uh, softcover, or hardcover on Amazon. Uh, coming to the Philippines soon, not yet, we're not there yet, but we will get there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interiors, as so many had requested that overseas, uh, rightfully so. Uh, we already have that in the Philippines. Uh, the Philippine copies have color maps inside already. Uh, that too is available on Amazon in hardcover, softcover, both in color or in black and white soft cover, if you wish. Uh, all books, including Solomon's Treasurer, are now free in ebook. Uh, we're not going to do an ebook for this one because we have this video series animated, and we're going to release one with all five uh, as one video as well. So, no need to do an ebook when we'll have the video animation. Uh, more coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now always remember, 
prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone. Oh,